Warm greetings to all of you and Namaste. It is my great pleasure to participate in the summit on COVID-19, the world of work and building a better future of work. At the outset, let me congratulate ILO for organizing the global summit and pleasure to be with you and my sincere gratitude to IOE and ILO for providing me the opportunity to be amongst you on this day. The outbreak of COVID-19 has had an unprecedented crisis across the world, a health crisis and a subsequent economic crisis. India imposed one of the most stringent lockdowns and this was a nationwide lockdown for almost three months. These containment measures have indeed helped us control the virus but have adversely impacted economic activity, global trade and the employment scenario all over the country. And currently now factories are barely functioning at 50% capacity. I think it behooves us to first appreciate the fact that while all of us are in the, in the same storm, we're not all in the same boat. The impact for those in the informal sector, the job loss, the fact that they have no safety margin or no safety net, these are things which have acutely come to our notice. And I think it's time for us to swing into action to support and ensure that there is no loss of life due to starvation. And I think the Indian government has done a tremendous job uh, in terms of support, uh, in terms of food. But I also believe it's time for us to analyze the structure of what we have and significantly look at what we can do about the challenge in job loss. 124 million jobs lost in India, of which more, most of them, 90% of them are in the informal sector. About 27 million people in the age group of 20 to 30 lost jobs in April. This is not a statistics, it's not a number for us to look at, but really to analyze the impact on these individuals' families. How are they going to put the next meal on the table? What will the impact be for small ch children in the home? How do they manage the healthcare expenses of the elderly in the house? And considering this aspect, it's important for us to look at a certain number of pillars. The first pillar is really the best positive healthcare response that we can possibly give. After the healthcare response, I think it's crucial for us to look at the economic response. How do we bring back jobs? How do we reopen factories? How do we reduce the fear in people's mind and teach them to be safe and cautious? Wear a mask, sanitize your hands, maintain social distancing. So to be cautious, but yet not to be anxious to the point of completely staying away from work or staying away from their normal lives. Moving on to what I believe is the central topic or the theme is really the future of work. I first of all propose a human-centered future of work. In uh, the Indian culture, there is a concept of a mandala, which is a period or a time cycle of 41 days. And they say that if you do anything for 41 days, it goes from beyond being a single action, but all, almost gets ingrained in your capability or it becomes a habit. Many of us have been working from home for more than 41 days. So I think this is something which has now become very much a part of our capability, a part of our DNA. Organizations have adjusted, IT systems have stepped up. And people have learned how to manage in this environment to the point that WFH, working from home, is now people are saying we don't work from home. It is LAW, which is living at work. COVID has really been uh, an inflection point for the adoption of digital technology. Uh, I think one of the big things I'm looking at uh, for my uh, women colleagues is that it really frees up many job opportunities which they hitherto gave up uh, because they needed to be in the home or supervise the home uh, or, or needed a certain degree of flexibility which a 95 job did not afford them. I think in the same breath, uh, it's important for us to debate, to resolve and to find solutions for how can we further formalize the informal work economy.
What can we do towards a universal social protection coverage? Uh, because it is the lack of this coverage which has made so many people vulnerable do, during the pandemic. I would also like us to very quickly address the entire aspect of child labor. Because during this pandemic, schools have been shut and therefore many children have been put to work. I hope that very quickly uh, we are able to reopen our schools, not just because training is important and children need to evolve, but in India there is an additional factor that the schools are a significant source of nutrition for that child's life because the midday meal scheme uh, is a significant lifeline holding, upholding the nutrition of children in our country. I also believe that we should look at multilateral cooperation for the revival of global economic trade. I would like to reiterate that the pace of business and economic recovery will be determined by how quickly we absorb the workforce which has been laid off during the pandemic crisis and also create fresh job opportunities for people who will be joining in future. Business or economic revival will truly depend on demand stimulation, on international trade, on productivity, on exports, on ease of doing business, on alternatives to what we are exporting, on various aspects of competitiveness where the labor, the workforce are a very crucial part. And keeping all these aspects in mind, I think that we should look for the sake of the world, for the sake of our future, for the sake of the environment, that we work together, we work collaboratively, we work in a humane manner and we create a human centric approach to recovery, to revival, to the workplace. All the very best to each one of you. Stay safe. I hope that very soon the world comes out of this, uh, the throes of a pandemic. I hope that very soon we discover a vaccine and that we can look forward to the normal returning as quickly as possible. With warmest greetings from India, with my very best wishes from FIKI, the organization which I represent, which has over 350,000 uh, members as its representatives. I thank the ILO for organizing this conference virtually so that there is no break in the tremendous momentum that you have created across the world in taking care of the labor force. Namaste and thank you.